वेलकम टू सभी यूट्यूब चैनल साई विद्या इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन दिस लेक्चर वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्री टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम मॉड्यूल नंबर वन फर्स्ट वन इज एक्सपेक्टेशंस सेकेंड इज कैरेक्टर फंक्शंस एंड कंडीशनल रैंडम वेरिएबल्स फ्रॉम मॉड्यूल नंबर वन सिंगल रैंडम वेरिएबल्स लेट एस कंसिडर द फर्स्ट टॉपिक एक्सपेक्टेशंस expectation operator it can be applied on any general function g of x that means if you know the random variable as x and if you consider any function in terms of the random variable g of x then e operating on that is expectation operator is indicated by capital letter e it is operating on the function g of x can be expressed as integral over minus infinity plus infinity the same function g of x into the corresponding probability density function of the random variable f x of x with respect to x that means we should know the probability density function of the random variable x then if we can calculate or we can determine the expectation on any given function g of x with respect to single random variables we are going to define three expectation functions for single random variables they are first one is mean second is second order movement of the random variable and third parameter is the variance of the random variable the mean of the random variable is, is indicated by mu suffix capital letter x or in general it is e operating on x to the power of 1 it is the first order momentum of the random variable whereas the second order momentum is nothing but it is a expectation operator operating on the function x square x square third one is the variance it is indicated by sigma x square so it is the variance means so it is a expectation operator operating on x minus mu x whole square before going to the actual definitions of the mean so we should remember some of the standard uh, parameters related to expectation operator should note that expectation operator operating on any constant is always results with one constant value example expectation operator operating on the constant number 5 is always you will get 5 next is it is a linear operator that means suppose if i have five random variables like x1 x2 x3 up to x5 then if i know the sum of the random variables as x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to x5 then expectation operator operating on the sum can be splitted among each individual random variables that is e of x1 plus x2 up to x5 can be written as e of x1 plus e of x2 up to e of x5 suppose if i have a linear combination of the same random variable x in terms of some constants say it is uh, i have taken e of ax plus b where a and b are two constants then this can be written like this first split the expectation operator among ax and b then it can be written as e of ax plus e of b the b is a constant so expectation operator operating on the second uh, um some term b is always it is b and in this e of a x a is constant we can take that a outside the expectation operator so e of x we can write it as it is this we have to evaluate if i know the behavior of the random variable x then i can determine what is the value of the x by using this standard formula e of g of e expectation operator on any given function g of x equal to minus infinity plus infinity g of x into f x of x with reference uh, with respect to x now let's define the three standard expectation parameters for single random variable first one is the mean mean of the random variable x is indicated by e of x or the standard notation is mu x so mathematically e of x can be written as it is a integral over minus infinity plus infinity x into f x of x with respect to x so in this equation f x of x is the probability density function of the random variable x so it gives uh, first order 
moment of the random variable x that means the variation of the random variable with respect to uh, origin first order variation the second expectation opera operator on the single random variable is e of x square e of x square is nothing but second order moment of the random variable x so it can be written as e of x square equal to integral over minus infinity plus infinity if the function is x square you have to write x square into the probability density function of the same random variable with respect to x the third expectation is the variance of the random variable the standard notation for variance is sigma x square the variance of the random variable x is defined as it is a expectation operator operating on x minus mu x whole square so here the function is x minus mu x whole square so we can write in terms of integral formula as integral over minus infinity plus infinity x minus mu x whole square into f x of x with respect to x and in the later section we will prove that the variance of the x is always given by it is always equal to it is second order momentum of the random variable minus mean square value of the random variable that is e of x square minus mu x square is always equal to the variance of the random variable x that is sigma x square now let us prove this equation so they can ask this uh, derivation for up to 5 marks they will ask prove that the variance of the x equal to e of x square minus uh, mu x whole square or they can ask prove that the second order momentum equal to this is the sum of the variance plus mean square value so in order to prove the equation now let us start from the LHS we know that variance of the any random variable x is given by expectation operator operating on x minus mu x whole square so the LHS can be written as uh, one more representation of the variance of x is sigma x square so expand this x minus mu x whole square using the formula a minus v whole square so you will get x square plus mu x whole square minus 2x into mu x now use the linear property of the expectation operator we have three terms one that is the x square mu x square and the third term is uh, minus 2x into mu x using that linear property so if you split the expectation operator so then we get e of x square plus expectation operator operating on mean square value minus expectation operator operating on 2 into x into mu x now so if you simplify this equation so then we will get then we get uh, expectation operator operating on the x square is retained as same the second parameter is expectation operator operating on mu x whole square here we should note that mean of the random variability is one constant parameter expectation operator operating on any constant is one constant so e of mu x whole square is mu x square so the last term 2 into mu x is constant you take it outside the remaining thing is e of x and we know that e of x is nothing but mu x so 2 mu x into mu x becomes 2 mu x square therefore finally we will get the variance of the random variable x equal to second order momentum minus mean square value or we can also write this equation as e of x square equal to uh, sigma x square plus mu x whole square now let us understand the uh, actual meaning of the this relation in terms of electronics and communication systems now if we consider any signal which is a combination of ac and dc then assume that all these th three parameters are finite then e of x square of the random variable x represents the total power present in the signal x and sigma x square represents the ac power present in the random variable x and mu x square represents it is the dc power dc power that means the best example is we can consider one uh, rectifier so the output of the rectifier is a combination of both ac and dc therefore the total power is the sum of the ac power as well as dc power the total power is always given by e of x square and the ac power present in the output signal is given by the variance term 
and the mean square value gives the DC power present in the signal. Now, some of the observations are suppose if the mean of the random variable is 0, mu x square is 0, then we get the second order momentum equal to uh, sigma x square. That means the total power is same as the AC power because the uh, DC content is 0. Next, suppose if the uh, variance is 0, variance is zero, that means the AC content is 0, then the signal power E of x square can be equal to mu x square. So it is a pure DC signal. Pure DC signal. That means the second order momentum uh, equal to the square of the mean of the random variable then the random variable x is a pure dc if the second order momentum equal to the variance of the random variable then the type of the random variable is pure ac signal pure ac signal now if you know the variance we can define one more parameter of the random variable that is standard deviation standard deviation it is the square root of the magnitude of the variance. You should note that standard deviation is always a positive number. So it is the root of variance of the x. So the notation is sigma x. So standard deviation is always positive. Standard deviation is always positive. Well, we'll continue to the next topic from model number one. That is characteristic functions. Characteristic functions. The standard notation for characteristic function of any random variable x is any random variable x is so it is pi x of j omega it is capital letter pi x of j omega it is the standard notation of characteristic function with respect to random variable x suppose if we have a random variable y its characteristic function is pi y of j omega it is uh, defined as it is an expectation operator operating on e to the power of j omega x e to the power of j omega x and this we can expand by using the expectation definition in terms of integral in terms of integral here j is the imaginary operator omega is the angular frequency x is the independent variable that means we can expand e of E to e expectation operator on e power j omega x that is nothing but characteristic function as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e power j omega x into uh, the pdf of the random variable x that is f x of x with respect to x with respect to x using characteristic function we can determine we can determine nth order momentum of the random variable so from the previous topic, I have explained how to find E of x and how to find E of x square. And the same formula can be extended for up to nth order momentum of the random variable. Say if we have known the characteristics function of the random variable that is phi x of j omega, it is very easy to find the higher order moments of the random variable x. The formula for finding expectation operator on any nth order random variable is so it is a nth order derivative nth order derivative of characteristic function phi x of j omega with respect to j omega with the value of omega equal to zero that means so we are finding the momentum with reference to omega equal to zero suppose if i want the expectation operator on the first order random variable x then it is first order differentiation of pi x of j omega with respect to j omega with the value omega equal to zero if you want to find e of x square then it is second order derivative of pi x of j omega with respect to j omega and set the value to value of omega equal to zero similarly it can be extended to any higher order uh, expectation of the random variable well, we'll move on to the next topic in the first module that is conditioned random variable. So far we have considered the random variable x and uh, we have studied its uh, probability density function, cumulative, dis den cumulative distribution function and we have studied the expectation operator for the random variable x. Now in this topic we will consider a subset of the sample space x as one of the condition 
let us consider x be the random variable and we know its uh, probability density function as fx of x. Let b is a subset of sample space Sx. Then the condition random variable of random variable x under the condition b is denoted by x bar b. Here x bar b represents the condition random variable. So the condition is b and the random variable is x. Now we have to know how to find the probability distribution function as well as probability density function for the condition random variable x bar b. Now first probability distribution function. So probability distribution function means it is the cumulative distribution function for the random variable x bar b condition random variable x bar b so it is defined as it is a probability of probability of x less than or equal to x intersection with the conditional event b conditional event b divided by p of p now let us consider the conditional event b is in between x1 and x2 with x2 greater than x1 then the probability distribution function probability distribution function f x bar b of the random variable x is evaluated as so for x less than x1 it is 0 because for x less than x1 the set x less than or equal to x intersection with b becomes 0 therefore probability of 0 is always 0 next is if the value of the random variable is in between x1 and x2 then we have set b or set b as well as the random variable x so in that case the probability distribution function value is given by f x of x2 x2 minus f x of x1 divided by probability of the event b for any value of random variable x greater than x2 greater than x2 the value of the probability distribution function is 1. The value of the probability distribution function is 1. So we can remember the probability distribution function value always starts from 0. So it ends with 1. For any value in between x1 and x2 that means it is the range of the conditional event B. We can use this formula to find the probability distribution function of the conditional random variable x bar P. Similarly, once we know the probability distribution function, we can determine the probability density function of the condition random variable by using the formula, the PDF of conditional random variable x bar b equal to the derivative of the condition, uh, the derivative of cumulative distribution function of cumulative distribution function of the conditional random variable x bar b, x bar b. Now, let us understand the actual meaning of the conditional random variable density function value. Now, let us consider the event B. It is in between x1 and x2. It is a small portion in the probability density function of random variable x. The intersection of the intersection of x less than or equal to x, that means this entire uh, curve, with the probability uh, if the event B is only this event. So x1 to x2 event so this is the actual value of the pdf of x bar b conditional random variable now whatever the formulas we have for uh, single random variable x same formulas and properties holds good for conditional random variable also so if you find the total area of conditional random variable x bar b under the entire range of uh, conditional event B that means integral from x1 to x2 uh, f x bar of B with respect to x is always equal to 1 is always equal to 1 so while solving problems so we can remember the PDF of any conditional event x bar B is given by f x of x divided by the P of B value P of B value so in order to evaluate P of B P of B is nothing but so it is the area of the PDF curve from x1 to x2, x1 to x2. That means P of B equal to, it is the integral from x1 to x2 of 
the original probability density function of the random variable x or so it is also equal to so it is the difference between the cumulative distribution function values at x equal to x2 and x equal to x1 similar to the single random variable x we can define the expectations of conditional random variable x bar p first one the mean value of the random variable x bar b is given by mu x bar b or it is also equal to expectation operator on x bar b which is equal to x into here you should clearly remember it is the probability density function of conditional random variable x bar b so it is a first order so we are writing the same uh, first order vari uh, independent variable here x into f x bar b with respect to x the second order movement of conditional random variable is e of x square divided by b x square bar b is nothing but it is an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity x square into probability density function of the conditional random variable x bar b similarly the variance is given by it is expectation operator on x minus mu x bar b whole square so the same relation holds good among e of x square variance and mean square value that is the, the second order movement of conditional random variable e of x square bar b is equal to variance of the conditional random variable plus mean square value of the conditional random variable similarly the standard deviation of the a conditional random variable is square root of the variance of the conditional random variable x bar b so one important property we should note that the total area under the conditional random variable x bar b probability density function is also equal to 1 so this can be proved in the same way as we have proved the pro uh, area under the pdf curve as 1 for the random variable x now let us summarize the module number one so in module number one we have discussed the following topics so the first one we have discussed about the cumulative distribution function it is abbreviated as cdf its notation is capital letter f and subscript is the random variable and within parenthesis we use to represent the independent variable so it gives the probability distribution for the random variable x so less than or equal to any value of independent variable x it will be in between plus or minus infinity and the cdf value will be always in between 0 and 1 0 and 1 and we should always note the cdf is always greater than or equal to 0 the highest value is 1 and the least value is 0 and the probability density function probability density function is defined as f x of x is the derivative of the cdf value and the total area under probability density function is 1 total area under probability density function is always equal to 1 and we can use these cdf and pdf functions to evaluate the probabilities of the random variable so we have listed some of the general formulas for finding the probabilities so either you can use the density function or you can use the cumulative distribution functions next is we have discussed the probability mass function for the discrete random variable so it is a probability associated with the discrete random variable and we know that the sum of all the probabilities for any discrete random variable is always equal to 1 and for discrete random variables cumulative distribution function it is a function of unit step signal u of x minus xi and the probability density function it is a function of unit delta signal unit delta signal or it is also called as unit impulse signal just it is a train of either unit step that is your cdf function and it is a train of impulse signals that is pdf of the discrete random variable and we should remember the derivative of unit step signal is always unit impulse signal or its uh, inverse relation is the integration of the unit impulse signal is unit step signal so these signals you will study in detail in signals and systems and for 
this subject we need uh, the definition of the unit step signal and unit impulse signal and in while solving problems we will see how to sketch the pdf and cdf of the uh, discrete random variables and we have defined three important expectation parameters for single random variables that is the mean second order momentum and variance and these three parameters are related by e of x square equal to variance plus mean square value and you should note e of x square represents the yes total power in any signal in communication system and sigma x square represents pure ac power and mu x square represents it is a pure dc power and uh, we can find standard deviation using variance by using relation standard deviation equal to under root of the variance and we have defined the characteristics function for the random variable x by using the notation capital letter pi x of j omega it is defined as expectation operator on e to the power of j omega x so this function is it is in uh, frequency domain the result also you will get in terms of omega it gives the frequency domain details of the random variable x and using this characteristic function we can evaluate any nth order momentum of the random variable nth order momentum of the random variable e of x to the power of n by differentiating the given uh, characteristic function n times it is a nth order derivative of pi x of j omega by setting the value of omega equal to 0 finally we defined conditional random variable so if we uh, define one conditional event for the given random variable then the conditional random variable is represented by x bar b for this conditional random variable the cdf is given by it is the probability of the intersection of the entire sample space for the random variable x and the given event b divided by the probability of event b the probability of b can be evaluated either by using the cdf of the given random variable x that is fx of x2 minus fx of x1 or by integrating the given uh, probability density function for the random variable x between the limits x1 to x2 and we can determine the probability density function of the conditional random variable by using the formula f x bar x of x bar b of x equal to the differentiation of conditional uh, conditional random variable cumulative distribution function and the expectation parameters expectation parameters that is mean variance and as well as second order momentum the same formulas are applicable for conditional random variable also and the relationship holds good for conditional random variable that is the second order momentum of the conditional random variable is also equal to the variance plus the mean square value of the second order, uh, the conditional random variable.